Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we come into you this morning to worship and to praise you and give you all honor and glory. Lord, may your words take root in each one of our hearts. May you fill us with your goodness and with your understanding. And I lift up each and every one that would be looking at this on YouTube or internet or whatever. Lord, bless them and their families as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I am looking for the Messiah. One thing we do know that Jesus brought change. What was at that time was to be no more. What was the normal became the abnormal. That's just what salvation is, isn't it? What was is no longer. What will be is now. Let's view the words and actions of Jesus as he met a woman at the well. Her life and many others was changed to be no more. And as a church, as a body of believers, can we do any less? First, we see here that Jesus talked with the woman. And that was really out of the ordinary at that time. Jews did not speak to Samaritans. But Jesus came and brought a change. But as I look at the church age today, I see how many people from different denominations won't talk to others from other denominations. So really, it hasn't changed that much over the centuries. I got a flyer in the mail yesterday. Come Easter Sunday and worship with us. Well, I say this. It should have read, whatever church you attend, go to it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in trying to go into another pond and fish. There's enough lost people out there that would keep us busy. Now that's my feeling. I have never. When somebody told me they go to a certain church, go. That's where you belong. And that's very important today. There is no competition within denominations. Our competition is simply and strictly with the devil. The Bible, the disciples at that time marveled because there was no dealing between the Jews and the Samaritans. And that's the way it was. Because the rabbi, and rabbi meant teacher, and Jesus was a teacher, but he was also the Messiah, was forbidden to talk with women in public or instruct them in the law. You see, ladies, Jesus came and gave you your freedom. Your freedom was not given by the law. In the late, early 1900s is when the women was able to vote in the United States. But Jesus set women free way back in his day. And I think that's very important. No rabbi could even talk with his wife, his sister, daughter, in public and in the street. That's how rigid it was. Yes, we needed the Messiah. We need the Messiah now, and the Messiah is coming again. Mm. And that's very important. Mm. Jesus was a man of change. Why? Because the Son of God came to seek and to save the lost. I have never 
received so many obstacles that is being cast our way to stop the work of the Lord. It's one hill after the other. But as I've said many times, Satan don't understand this, but the more the opposition, the stronger we give in the Lord. Inscribe that in your hearts. Instead of complaining when opposition comes, start praising God. Amen. Because you're getting closer to Him. Jesus was a man of change. He set me free. He gave me the ability to live in freedom. The woman in verse 28. You didn't give me that one. I only wrote it up to 26. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to read it out of my Bible. The woman, he didn't put it in. He my The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the sea and said to the men, the woman forgot the reason she came to the well in the first place. It was to draw water. And when she met Jesus, nothing meant anything to her. <coughs> she met Jesus. The water pot now had no meaning. Earthly meaning now gave away to spiritual meaning. Once mattered. Things that once mattered no longer matter. When we meet Jesus, there's a change. The woman talked to Jesus. Her testimony was convincing. Her exciting excitement caused her to believe. In turn, her excitement caused the town to come and to see her Jesus and to hear Jesus, the word of life. What happens when we as believers today get excited for Jesus and start sharing what Jesus has done and is doing for us? You know, when, when people get together, it's easier to talk about someone else than it is to make up a conversation on your own. Have y'all ever noticed that? You get around and they start talking. Well, this woman got around Jesus and her excitement was real. But what about our excitement when we get around people? Is Jesus real in our lives when we outside of the church, when we outside of other believers? Is it as real then as it is when we in church worshiping Jesus? Now it's important to think about. Her testimony was convincing. Her excitement caused her to believe. And it excited the town because the town wanted to know just what did she have. What was her excitement? What I find fascinating about this, she was not with the other women. Do you know why she wasn't with the other women? Now she went to the, the well to draw water. What's the best time to draw water? Early in the morning before the heat rises. So that tells me something about her. Let's say I believe she was a woman of ill repute. And if you don't know what that means, get on Yahoo or something. <laughs> don't ask me because I ain't going to tell you. You might say, do you know what it means? Yeah, I know what it means. She was an outcast. How many times if you go to church often and you tire that people call you a fool? Has anybody ever done that to you? Why, well, you're a fool. 
Yeah, you better believe I am, baby. I'm a fool for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd rather be called a fool for Jesus instead of being called you put your money on the wrong horse. <laughs> or you put your money on the wrong lottery ticket. Mm -hmm. When I put my money in the offering, I know where it's going. Mm -hmm. It ain't important no politician. Amen. I like that. Whatever. <laughs> Praise God. Now let's get on. I'm looking for the Messiah. How many today are looking for a true meaning of life? For a reason and a purpose of life? Instead of the same old mundane thing over and over and over and over. You get up on Monday morning, you go to work, you get a paycheck if you're lucky on Friday, or you get a stimulus check. The same thing over and over and over and over. If you go to work, you'll get a paycheck on Friday. You're not going to get a stimulus check every Friday. <laughs> but anyway, the result of that talk with Jesus. What about the results when we talk to Jesus? Jesus hears us. He hears us. He hears us. Let me put it, no, I ain't going to put it to you like that. Jesus went out of his way. Talk to someone. He was not supposed to talk to. But he went out of his way. You know what he could have said? Oh, this woman, this woman's not going to listen to me. I'm not supposed to be talking to her anyway. I'm going to make a bunch of Jews mad at me. Of course, we know a bunch of Jews are going to be mad. So what he did wasn't going to make any difference. They didn't like him anyway. The Pharisees and Sadducees. But he didn't pay no mind to that. How about when you're with a crowd and you start praising Jesus, somebody might get offended. Well, that's okay. Because if they're offended, the Holy Spirit is starting to work with Jesus. 
Jesus knows everything. And she said, you must be a prophet. You know all about me. Well, I want to take that and turn it into today. Jesus knows all about me. How can I have freedom if I'm hiding things from Jesus? My freedom comes from knowing that my Jesus knows all about me and my Jesus still loves me and my Jesus forgives me. That gives me the freedom. I can't buy it. I can't sell it. I can't get on eBay. I can't do any of it because Jesus has all Amazon to it. Because Jesus has done everything already. And my freedom is not me hiding, but my freedom is Jesus knows it. Amen. He's not ashamed of it. Prove it. Okay, I just did. The woman at the well. She had five husbands. She doing good. I had one wife, but that's all I can handle. That's all I want. But if I'd have had two, Jesus would have forgave me. You see, Jesus wants us to have the freedom to worship Him. What does the Bible say? True believers must worship Him in truth and what? Now what do you mean by truth? I believe by truth it means that I must believe everything the Word of God. Not what man says. But what the Word of God says. What does the Word of God say about Jesus? And in spirit, we have to be in the spirit. Our spirit has to match God's spirit. And God speaks to us. Truth and in spirit. How many here want to be set free? A lot of people say, well, I've heard this so many times. You made your bed, now sleep in it. How many have ever heard that? You made your bed, now sleep in it. Well, I'm here to tell you something. I want to change the mattress and the sheets. You might have made your bed, but I sure can make it more comfortable for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? In other words, we become judgmental. Why does someone become judgmental? I'm asking y'all out there in Wonderland too. Why does people become judgmental? Because they cover up something in their life and they find a fault with you to justify what they're doing. Don't you think it's time to change and quit? I do. I need it. So if you've got a problem, I want to work with you. I'm not going to drag you through the mud. Why? Because Jesus didn't drag me through the mud. Amen? What's the definition of true love? According to the Word of God, how do people know that you are a believer? Not because how big a cross you have. Not because you've got to have a wheelbarrow to carry your Bible. How, how does people know that you are a true believer? This is Bible. It is simple. You want to know what it is? Huh? Yes. That's me. That, that's PJ talking. <laughs> By the love that you have for one another. It's not how many times you bow your knee. It's not how many times you pray. It's not how you do this. It's not how you do that. But the love that you have one for another. Woo, that's good, right? Yeah. Looking for the Messiah. Looking for the Messiah. The true substance of life is to do God's will. 
to accomplish what we are here for. If I'm here only to breathe, to eat, to sleep, and to get up, I'm not accomplishing what God wants me to do. He wants me to worship Him and to love others. The fields are white for harvest. How many of you believe the Messiah is coming back? Why don't we ask you a question? How many of you believe that Jesus is the Messiah? Well, what did the Bible say? I love this verse here. Jesus said unto her, All right, wait a minute. Let's go to 25. It is all encouraged this right now. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is coming which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Y'all got that? He will tell us all things. Okay? If I need to know something, I need to get the word, I need to pray, I need to seek the faith of the Lord, because he what, 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 what? All right. Then what did Jesus tell her? Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Jesus is the Messiah and he right now will tell us all things pertaining to life. Right. Somebody might say you can't have two worlds. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not worried about one but I got the other and that's Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, I am looking for the Messiah. The Messiah has come. The Messiah is coming again. But we have to worship him in truth. And that truth means this. I believe we are a shadow of a doubt. He is who he says he is. I believe he was born a virgin. He lived the life of until 33. He was anointed by God, John the Baptist. I believe he was crucified for my sins. I believe he died. I believe he was buried. And I believe he rose from the dead. And I believe he ascended to the Father. And I believe he's coming back again. Yeah. That's the truth. People add a lot of stuff to it. But that is the truth. We have to worship him in truth because we believe that he is the truth. And he's coming back. Amen. He's coming back. But right now, thank you, Father. Right now, God just told me to tell you as a true believer, he is living within you. And I have an amen. amen. Okay. Now I believe this, and I'm going to close with this. And I believe this is the purpose of the true church today. Because it always had me. That is to gather. Well, first of all, the food of the church is to do the will of God, the Father. And that is to gather the lives of souls for the kingdom of God. And I believe that. To gather the souls for the kingdom of God. So, we're going to have an invitation. I'm excited.